got a new school bus picked up for the kids. And we just barely pulled in the driveway and as you can hear in the back back there, they're already trying to get seats pulled out. Well guys, today's the day. We're gonna start putting the floor in the school bus. Yesterday, we got everything cleaned up, all the screws out, um, all swept out, and- Bought all the materials. Bought all the materials, brought them home. So now it's time to start laying insulation, laying flooring, or laying subfloor, and then laying flooring. And if you're curious about how much it costs to put uh, this type of floor in a full-size school bus, here's a picture of the receipt. still feel like building materials are really high um, but I know that insulating this floor and doing the floor this way is going to make a huge difference in how well uh, this bus keeps the kids warm and cool in the respective seasons. We're doing our best to finance this on our own. Um, some of our subscribers on YouTube have requested that we do a fundraiser to help cover the cost of all of this. Uh, and so if you guys, I mean, even if you only have a dollar to donate, I'll make sure to include the fundraiser link and our PayPal link in the description of the video. If you find it in your heart and you feel led to help us out with this project, anybody who isn't aware, we are building this full-size school bus into two bedrooms for two of our older kids. Um, because when we move to Arkansas, they will need a comfortable place to live and this is our what we're doing. They had another school bus, but we had a an electric heater malfunction and catch fire and they lost everything that they had. So we're building out this new bus for them. And I mean, we've already spent, I don't know, about $2,500 between the price of the bus and the materials so far. We've already spent about $2,500 on this project, and we're not the kind of people that just have that kind of money laying around. We live paycheck to paycheck like most Americans. So again, if you feel it in your heart, I'm not begging for money, guys, but um, every single dollar helps. And we really, really appreciate you guys. Ow. Whoa. Uh, ow. I'm done for today.
of the subfloor that come out of here. Most of it's not in bad shape, but you can tell that this had some rotting on it, um, especially around the edges. I'm gonna take you guys inside really quick and show you the floor before we start laying down the subfloor. Uh, because I'm actually really surprised that this school bus doesn't have more rust in it than it does. You can see there's some surface rust going on right here. But from what I understand, most of the rust typically is around these wheel wells. And there's not any rust there at all. Um, the worst part is back here in this back corner. And even that's not that bad. Um, now, Wiley and I have done extensive research on this, and this isn't the first bus that we've built out, built out, so we've kind of learned from our previous mistakes. However, uh, some people believe that you should build a subfloor um, with two by fours and then insulate between the boards, uh, but we have learned that that's not that great of an idea because everywhere your floor touches wood is going to transfer heat and transfer cold. And so, I mean, you can you can feel a difference. You can feel your floor and tell where your two by fours are and where they're not. And so we are not going to be building a subfloor. This is gonna be a floating floor. Now, we believe that this is a good option for the bus that we are building um, because this isn't, we're not building this out to be an RV. Um, this bus will be driven to our place in Arkansas and parked and that's where it's gonna stay. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're not worried about it shifting too much because it's, it's only going to be driven from here to there and then it's not going to move anymore. But that being said, that is the way they're building out schoolies that actually drive down the road too. Right, right, That's right. That's the preferred right. way of doing it. Right. So, you know, we've done a lot of research on this and this is how we feel is best for us to build this. Um, feel free to leave your suggestions in the comment section. Uh, we still need to figure out how we're going to insulate the walls and the ceiling without taking away too much space from the interior. Um, but that's... But the thing is behind this idea is this Formula 150 has a crush rate of 25 pounds per square inch, which comes out somewhere around like 2,000 pounds per square foot. So, with this being under three-quarter inch plywood and all that stuff, you know, uh, with weight distribution on it, they're not going to crush this. This is not going to, you know, end up being all crushed down and wasted away underneath the floor. So, that's where the whole idea comes from with the floating floor system. And we actually learned about the... This foam board, the Formula 150, one of our subscribers actually told us exactly what it was called. Um, but as many of you probably know already, we are wanting to build an earth home or earth ship type home in Arkansas. And we are going to need a bunch of this 
to put under our foundation to keep con to help with condensation and heat transfer and all of that kind of stuff. So and they say this will actually hold the weight of your um, footings and piers and all that stuff. This has got such a crush weight that it will not crush under those conditions. Which is amazing because so. it's just foam. It's super light. Um, but anyway, all right, uh, enough talking. Time Let's to get start to work. working. Yep. We got things to do, y'all. And uh, the idea is we are going to use some liquid nails and we're going to spread it on the floor and then we're going to stick the foam to it and then we'll put some more liquid nails down and we're going to put then we're going to put the plywood on top of that. Oh, uh, the most important thing that I want to point out is that none of our joints are going to line up. So our foam board is going to be running run differently than our plywood. And for the simple fact that when you have joints that line up with each other, that causes a weak spot in your floor. So none of our joints are going to line up. Right. Yep. Okay. That's it. Let's get going.
one, three, four. Wednesday and we had to stop what we were doing to do this live or do our live stream so we are back today with and we're finishing the floor hopefully um, we glued that down over there we glued the foam board down and then we glued the wood to the foam board and that stuff ain't going nowhere it is solid and it looks like I put a dead battery in our camera so I'm gonna have to turn it off and replace the battery and turn this back on so we shall be right back what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut these uh, last couple of pieces that we need. We already know what size they need to be, so we're gonna get pre-cut them. And then we're gonna have to move our sawhorses and everything to the back side of the bus and get it out of the way so that we can finish laying this down. Um, when I come back, I'm gonna put this on time-lapse though so that y'all can watch because there's not really anything whole, real interesting going on. Um, but that way y'all can just watch us finish this out. You got anything to say? Nope. Okay, all right, this is on 2%, I gotta turn it off. There you go. Throw it out the door. There you go. Here. Next. Nope. Oh, you gotta cut it first. Other side. Oh shit! <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> oh, my nose says it's cold. It's running. And then pokey. Poke it like a hundred thousand times. Yeah, poke it a whole bunch of times. Difficulties. Good. Now we fold this back in. Here you go. Dang, that's a hole. Yep, that's a hole, all right. Put the back in first. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like that. I cut it. Put it, touch it on the ground. Touch it, touch the tip to the ground. I cut
this floor so that it can hold it down on the glue uh, while the glue dries and tomorrow we will be back probably to put the linoleum in right when yep as yep. soon as the glue gets dry enough after we get to arkansas and park this bus we'll be pulling this driver's seat out um we'll probably build some sort of shelving around here for emily that looks nice for her to put her little plants on and bookshelves and that kind of stuff. And everything else. Everything so if else. anyone needs a bus seat, we've, we've got one. Yeah, if anybody needs a bus seat, once and we get to And don't be giving my stuff away. That's mine. No, no. Uh-huh. <laughs> As for uh, the wheel wells, we are going to build, the plan is to build boxes around them. And um, we've got some leftover insulation from another job, just the pink fiberglass stuff and we are going to just pack those little boxes full of that insulation. And the, then Hunter's bed will be built on top of these wheel wells. And, um, and then he'll have a little bit of storage space underneath, but we'll build the bed on top of that so that we don't really lose a lot of space by having those in here. Yep. <laughs> the, the divider wall um, that we're going to be building soon is going to be just the front side of these wheel wells and that'll cut the bus almost in half yep and we've got some uh we hunter's have some door will be the back door yeah hunter's door hunter will use the back door and emily will use the front door and then um we have some insulation that was handed down to us uh it's recycled insulation but it is, uh, it's insulation and it's sound deadening. So we're gonna put that in the center wall because it's something that we already have on hand. That way, when Hunter is listening to his music too loud, um, or Emily's crying herself to sleep, they don't have to listen to each other. <laughs> no, it would be me listening to music, Hunter crying, because that's what he does most days. Okay, all right, whatever. But <laughs> point is, they can have their peace and quiet. Um, that should help uh you know eliminate some of the sound transfer back and forth because that was the that was one of their biggest complaints in their last bus is that we didn't insulate that center wall and because it's an interior wall and didn't really need insulation but then they could hear each other and they'd get into arguments through the wall and stuff like that so we're going to insulate it and hopefully prevent some of that this time help anyway it's not going to prevent it i promise it'll help it'll help all right so now it's time to get oh. out of here it's time to get out of here uh, go find something else to do. We've got to wait for this glue to dry. It takes about 24 hours. Um, give or take, it might take a little bit longer since it's cold. Um, but yeah, so the, f the, the insulation on the floor is done. The subfloor is done. Next comes insulation. Then we'll be working on the divider wall. And then we are going to figure out what we're going to do for walls on the inside as far as um, what we're going to do to insulate the walls and the ceiling we haven't quite figured that out we're also gonna have to do electrical um, and plumb in the gas lines for the uh, the propane heaters that we have yep um, thank you Jody Young for sending the propane heaters that will be a much safer alternative to the electric space heaters right plus in Arkansas we won't be able to use space heaters because we're gonna be off-grid 
and those things pull a lot of electricity. Yep. So propane's a whole lot easier to use. Yep, yep. Well, anyway, guys, um, that's a wrap for this video. If you want to see more videos like this, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like this video, and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on future updates on this bus build. And uh, we will see you guys on the next one. We love you.